Hello everyone, my name is Brian Holler and I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Space Telescope Science Institute. I'm presenting this work on the prospects for the exploration of trans-Neptunian objects with Interstellar Probe on behalf of my colleagues Kirby Runyon and Michelle Bannister. Voyagers 1 and 2 continue to operate and return data from beyond the heliosphere, the bubble carved out of the interstellar medium by the solar wind. At present, 43 years after launch, Voyager 1 is 150 AU from the Sun, and Voyager 2 is 125 AU from the Sun. While data returned by the Voyager spacecraft have been extremely useful, they were not originally designed for such prolonged data collection, and are therefore limited in their capabilities. Enter an interstellar probe. The interstellar probe is a NASA heliophysics mission concept, led by the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory. The primary goal of this conceptual mission would be to carry a payload dedicated to the study of the environment of the outer heliosphere and local interstellar space. It would aim to travel beyond 200 AU over the course of 50 years, returning a wide range of data the entire time, using currently available technology. To reach those distances, it will obviously have to pass through the solar system on its way out. Along the way, an interstellar probe would present the opportunity to study trans-Neptunian objects, icy minor bodies with semi-major axes beyond Neptune. There are currently about 3,000 such worlds known, with many more expected to be discovered in the coming decade. These worlds are typically categorized by their orbital properties, with the various dynamical classes recording the history of the solar system's early dynamical evolution. Some TNOs are currently in resonance with Neptune, with the best example being Pluto, which completes two orbits for every three orbits completed by Neptune. TNOs and other resonances are also present across the width of the trans-Neptunian region. The inner edge of the classical Kuiper belt is defined by the semi-major axis that TNO would have if it were in a 3 to 2 resonance with Neptune. The outer edge is defined by the 2 to 1 resonance. These limits correspond to approximately 42 and 47 AU, respectively. Classical Kuiper belt objects are TNOs not in resonance with Neptune with semi-major axes between 42 and 47 AU. A further distinction is made between the dynamically cold and hot classical objects, with the delineation at 5 degrees orbital inclination. The cold classicals are thought to be undisturbed remnants of the primordial disk of minor bodies that form beyond the giant planets. Other, more distant TNOs include the scattered disk objects, detached objects, and extreme TNOs, and are at the forefront of dynamical studies of the trans-Neptunian region. Of particular interest for robotic reconnaissance are the TNO dwarf planets. We define a dwarf planet to be any minor body with a diameter greater than 400 kilometers, which is theoretically large enough for the object to be in hydrostatic equilibrium. By this definition, about 130 TNO dwarf planets are currently known. They are scattered across the various orbital classifications, and the 10 largest are shown on the left. The TNO dwarf planets showcase the incredible diversity in the trans-Neptunian region with a wide range of surface compositions, geological features, satellites, and other properties that make them ideal for study by spacecraft. The primary instrument on an, in, on an interstellar probe for investigation of the surface of a TNO dwarf planet would be a visible and near-infrared imaging spectrometer. The visible imager would return information on geological features, allowing an inference of interior properties, as well as albedo and color variations for understanding surface evolution. The near-infrared spectrometer would ideally cover 1 to 5 microns in order to detect the fundamental and overtone absorption features of relevant ices, from volatile nitrogen to non-volatile water and complex hydrocarbons. The heliophysics goals would ultimately dictate an interstellar probe's trajectory, with a consensus seeming to form around leaving through the waste in order to properly constrain the shape of the heliosphere. The green box in the plot on the left indicates the probable ecliptic coordinates of the trajectory between 20 degrees north and 20 degrees south latitude and 300 to 330 degrees longitude. The filled red star corresponds to the position of the nose of the heliosphere, and the open red star marks the tail. Red dots represent the positions of a handful of the low inclination cold classical cover belt objects on January 1st, 2040. The purple dots represent extreme TNOs that have large semi-major axes and perihelia. And the black dots represent dwarf planets. The dwarf planets 2002 MS4, Quawar, Pluto, and Ixion fall within this highlighted region, 
with Gong Gong just outside of the highlighted region and closest to the ecliptic plane. Prior to or after a dwarf planet flyby, an interstellar probe could also perform serendipitous rendezvous with smaller TNOs similar to the New Horizons extended mission target, Erikoth. The chance for such an encounter would be greater for a trajectory along the ecliptic, where the cold classical KBOs orbit. Approximately 35% of known TNOs have same major axes between 42 and 47 AU, and inclinations of less than 5 degrees, categorizing them as cold classicals. In the 2020s, 40,000 to 60,000 new TNOs are expected to be discovered by the Vera C. Rubin Observatory's Legacy Survey of Space and Time. If we assume a number of the, on the lower end of this estimate of 45,000 new TNOs, we could expect 16,000 new cold classicals based on current population statistics. If we evenly distribute these objects throughout the plane of the ecliptic in the classical Kuiper belt between 42 and 47 AU, each cold classical would have a circular area to itself with a radius of 0.17 AU. A flyby distance of 15,000 kilometers, comparable to that of New Horizons by Pluto, would, would result in the probability for a close encounter of 3 times 10 to the minus 5%. However, 30 cold classicals could fit along a trajectory radially outward from the sun, raising the probability of making a flyby in the classical Kuiper belt to 1 in 100,000. While the probability of a serendipitous close encounter is low, plenty of opportunities should be present for remote observations, similar to those made by New Horizons, as an interstellar probe passes through the trans Neptunian region. In summary, we expect the interstellar probe, a NASA Heliophysics Division mission concept, to be incredibly useful for the study of trans Neptunian objects. Choosing a trajectory that would result in a close encounter with a TNO dwarf planet would make a significant contribution to the study of the surfaces, interiors, and even atmospheres of icy outer solar system worlds. There are additional flyby opportunities on any trajectory through the trans Neptunian region, with a higher probability of serendipitously encountering a smaller TNO if the trajectory is along the ecliptic. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask in the chat, and we will respond as soon as we can. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this talk.